siglo XX con Mike Wallace. A continuación en siglo XX, la tragedia del vuelo 800 de la TWA. I've lost everything. Everything that you live for. 230 vidas perdidas en lo que parecía un acto de terrorismo. We thought it was a good chance it was a bomb. Pero que después de las investigaciones resultó ser otra cosa. We see no evidence of a crime. Soy Mike Wallace y esto es Siglo XX. El 17 de julio del año 96, el vuelo 800 de TWA salió del aeropuerto JFK a las 8.19 pm hacia París. Era una cálida y despejada noche con buena visibilidad. A 12 minutos del despegue ocurrió la tragedia. You start praying and you start hoping that somehow uh, they survived it. Pam, esposa de Joe Lushner, y sus dos hijas, Shannon, de 10, y Kathy, de 8 años, se encontraban a bordo. I knew that she was on the plane uh, because I talked to her just 15 minutes before they boarded. As TWA Flight 800 climbed away from New York's Kennedy Airport, the pilot of the jumbo jet radioed the Boston Air Traffic Control Center. Las noticias de la caída del vuelo 800 se propagaron de inmediato. La suegra de Joe Lishner llamó para saber si Pam y las dos niñas habían subido al avión. I said, yeah, they got on the plane. I talked to her just 15 minutes before they boarded. And her mother said, oh my God, a TWA plane went down off in New York. And she told me to go turn on CNN. And by the, by the time <coughs> I turned on the TV, they had already had the... The famous pictures of the, of the fire in the water. Lo que no mostraban las imágenes era lo que muchos testigos oculares decían haber visto mientras el 747 caía al agua. I kept thinking, my God, I think I just saw something get blown out of the sky. Las autoridades llamaron inmediatamente al FBI debido a las posibilidades de sabotaje. We thought it was very, very possible this was a act of terrorism, and if it was states, we didn't know, but if it was, it was an act of war. Para Jim Carlstrom, jefe del FBI en Nueva York, por más de dos años, el accidente tenía más que intereses profesionales. One of my agents in the office, a friend for 25 years, Charlie Christopher, his wife was the senior stewardess on the airplane. And of course he's calling, looking for me at my residence, asking me, Jim, what's going on? What do you know? So in the first 15 or 20 minutes it became very, very personal. Esa era una de las razones por la cual quería saber si una bomba había derribado al avión. Well, we're going to look for residue, we're going to look for certain streaking patterns, we're going to look for uh, the way the metal is shaped or, or fragmented, if it is, we don't know that. We're going to look at all those things. En Houston, Joe Lishner estaba sorprendido. It was just shock and fear and, you know, just, a, just an unbelievable sense of foreboding. I mean, here you are in your house alone and you just found out that, you know, your entire family was in a, in a plane crash. Joe y su asistente Judy llegaron a Nueva York a un escenario de confusión generalizada. It was just total pandemonium. When we, when we went to the Ramada, which was, which was basically where they had all the families go um, and stay during the recovery period, Um, you walked into the lobby and there were thousands of people, literally thousands of people, all there to help. There were so many different agencies involved. I mean, you had the NTSB, you had the FBI, you had the Coast Guard, you had the Navy, you had the Red Cross, you had the Suffolk County Medical Examiner's Office, 
uh, the Suffolk County uh, Sheriff's Department, New York City Police, uh, the list goes on and on, you know, at least 10 to 15 different agencies. And everybody was in charge and nobody was in charge. A pesar de la confusión, Lushner esperaba que se encontraran sobrevivientes. You start praying and you start hoping that somehow uh, they survived it, that, you know, they're out there clinging to some wreckage or, you know, floating in the ocean, you know, just somehow that uh, the worst didn't happen. De hecho, las autoridades buscaban tenazmente a cualquier sobreviviente. By pure coincidence, the New York Air National Guard was already on the scene practicing rescue maneuvers. Well, we didn't see the explosion. What we saw was the aftermath. Uh, we saw the plummeting fireballs, two large uh, fireballs. C-130 pilots Colonel Bill Stratemeyer and Major Mike Weiss were the first to call for help. The ocean became engulfed in flames. About a football-filled size area was engulfed in flames when we arrived. A ellos se unió una flota de botes particulares para buscar sobrevivientes. Marina operator Bob Lanier has pulled boaters out of water, never airplane passengers. He's got a body in the back. When he heard there was a need, he brought out surgical gloves. I was one of those lucky ones that had 500 pair of the plastic painting gloves, you know, so they just happened to be there. Were you prepared, though, for what you saw? Um, I had spent some time in Vietnam, so I, I guess maybe a little bit, but... Um, I was shocked. I was shocked. Uh, maybe I went out there with the idea in mind that, uh, like some movie, this thing was going to be floating on top of the surface. Um, or that, you know, we would hear the screams of people. Pero no había nada. I, I wish we would have found something that was a little bit uh, more hopeful. You know, more promising than what we found when we were out there. But uh, if we didn't find that, at least uh, the remains of whatever victims we did find will have a place to go. Mike Flynn también pensó que había sobrevivientes. Él era otro de los voluntarios locales que salió esa noche al agua para ayudar. Our intention was to go out to find survivors or assist with finding survivors. Por el contrario, encontró dos cuerpos. A uh, man and a woman. Uh, the woman was a flight attendant, uh, just based on, uh, on her uniform. It's definitely, uh, it shakes you up inside and, uh, you know, you think about a lot of things. This eerie, tragic, incredibly sad scene. Uh, citizens in, the, in boats from Suffolk and Nassau County, heroes going out into the flames that night, pulling bodies into their boats. Young Coast Guards, 18, 19 years old, piloting their little craft into 30-foot flames on the ocean that burned for hours, looking for survivors. Uh, can you think of a more tragic scene than that? In the airport of Kennedy, the family members were waiting for answers to what had happened. They were trapped in a void of communication. No one was saying anything. One of the sad parts about it is that nobody really had responsibility for dealing with the victims. Nobody 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 had responsibility for dealing who were facing the worst possible tragedy, that made matters worse. Uh, we're all dealing with the same emotions. Perhaps I'm uh, a little bit more angry than others because of the treatment that we received. Frank Capoza was the U.S. host for an exchange student from France. We love him. Ludovic Jansen was 11 years old. It was last night when he spoke to his mother, he cried because he missed his mom. Jansen was friends with Luke Sargent, who also came to JFK today. I thought there would be survivors, and I thought that he would be one of them, but I guess not anymore. Por lo menos él sabía que su amigo estaba a bordo del avión. Otros no estaban seguros, y mientras las horas pasaban y el silencio crecía, las demandas por una lista oficial de pasajeros aumentaron. We've been trying for six hours to get that list. We can't get it. We can't get anyone on the telephone that's in charge here. The person that supposedly is in charge, we were told, has gone home to get some rest because he's going to have a tough day tomorrow. Uh, we're certainly sorry that uh, Mayor Giuliani has been disappointed in the notification process. Uh, these things take time, and we do them according to the advice of the NTSB. Uh, that's what we are doing. 
Cuando todavía no había lista, el gobernador de Nueva York se unió a las protestas. I think that uh, we have gone out of our way to, to impress upon them the importance uh, that the families have to be provided answers to the extent possible. The first 24 to 48 hours was terrible, I think, on everyone's part. Um, uh, TW response was dismal. Nobody really knew what was going on. Finalmente apareció la lista. This afternoon, TWA announced it had the final list and began the awful process of notifying families in this airport hotel. It's a difficult process to uh, track everybody down, make sure the lists are all just right, and uh, do this in a, in a caring and compassionate way. But grieving family and friends are still questioning why it took so long for TWA to tell them precisely who was aboard the downed plane. It was Friday afternoon, 40 hours after the crash, before Leonard Romagna of Florida got through to TWA to learn that Barbara, his wife of 51 years, was a victim. I was getting so damn mad that no one called, uh, made any kind of reference to, uh, well, you know, we're searching for all survivors, etc., and we will call you as soon as possible. Nothing. Absolutely cold. Incluso mientras las familias de las víctimas lidiaban con el caos posterior, las autoridades comenzaban a tener una idea más clara de lo que había causado el accidente. At the crash scene on the Atlantic, top FBI and NTSB investigators met aboard a Navy salvage ship, looking for clues amid the wreckage and remains. They still do not have a single piece of solid physical evidence pointing to a bomb, no traces of chemical residue, and no signs of an explosion. But investigators still strongly suspect a bomb. No pasó mucho tiempo antes de que el FBI comenzara a preguntar sobre un misil o algún tipo de objeto llamativo que había sido visto en el cielo cuando el vuelo 800 de la TWA explotó. We do have some information that there was something in the sky. A number of people have seen it. A number of people have described it very similarly. We had the team put together. People knew what they were supposed to do. Uh, the thing that was different about this I mean, we show up at tragedies all the time. People in the police department and the FBI and DEA and Secret Service. The thing that was different about this is you had 230 souls, people, kids, teenagers, newlyweds, grandmothers out there in the ocean. That was different. Incluso cuando las autoridades comenzaban a explorar la posibilidad de que fuera un atentado terrorista, la larga y dolorosa tarea de recuperar los cuerpos e identificar las víctimas se interpuso. Esta historia al regreso en siglo XX. Siglo XX con Mike Wallace. El vuelo 800 de la TWA estalló sobre el agua, lo que complicó y prolongó la penosa tarea de recuperar a las víctimas. Para familiares y amigos fue una pesadilla. The primary objective uh, after we knew that they were dead was to recover uh, their body. And the weight that is on your shoulders when you're waiting to get the word um, is just overwhelming. Durante las primeras 24 horas posteriores al accidente, las autoridades recuperaron más de 100 cuerpos de las 230 personas que estaban a bordo. Pero Joe Lishner no sabía si alguien de su familia estaba allí. I really wanted to get out there to be, to see what was going on, first of all, and uh, really to be uh, near them as quickly as I could. De modo que Joe tomó un helicóptero. Basically, just a, I mean, a symbolic gesture for my wife and kids. I threw um, three roses out over the side. I've lost everything. Everything that you live for. Dos días después, Joe recibió la noticia de que habían recuperado el cuerpo de su esposa. The remains of my wife, Pam Lichner, um, have been identified by the medical examiner's office. And she was recovered off the surface on the first night. Um, they didn't identify her until um, probably for the following uh, Monday, about five days later. 
Y cuatro días después, el cuerpo de su hija menor, Kathy, había sido encontrado. Pero su otra hija, Shannon, todavía estaba extraviada. My wife was just a great mother. She would not rest if uh, she didn't have her children by her side. I'll stay forever, as long as it takes. Mientras esperaba noticias de su otra hija, Lichner se convirtió en portavoz de las familias, expresando la frustración sobre el retraso en la identificación de las víctimas. What we resent at this point in time is that they've had a hundred bodies for this long period of time and have not been able to identify all of them. It's taken too long. Lo que también tomaba mucho tiempo para las familias era el proceso de recuperación complicado por mareas violentas y mal tiempo y el área tan vasta del lugar. Understand, the bodies were co-mingled in the wreckage. So you'd have to pick up a piece of wreckage, then you'd pick up a body. Pick up wreckage, pick up a body. It was a tremendous, tremendous challenge. In a painfully slow process, searchers today recovered another eight bodies. It has been 12 days since the TWA disaster, 12 days of unimaginable agony for the relatives of the missing victims. We want our loved ones back, and we'd like it to be expedited. Please. Just anything. We're just, the families are just grasping at anything. The families are angry tonight that investigators are saying that some bodies may never be found, that the crash site may be their watery grave. Joe Lichner se encontraba entre los atormentados. Le preocupaba que el cuerpo de su hija Shannon no pudiera ser recuperado. Después de 12 días de la caída, le informaron que había sido encontrada. She was uh, recovered on the 28th, um, but then identified on the 29th. I found out about it on the 29th, but the significance of that for me was that the, uh, the 28th was my wife and I's uh, 12th wedding anniversary. En la pequeña comunidad de Montesville, Pensilvania, el lento proceso de recuperación e identificación era especialmente agonizante. A bordo del vuelo 800 de la TWA había 16 adolescentes y 5 guías adultos de una secundaria local en un viaje escolar a Francia. This is a time of meditation. It's a time of prayer. Don't be afraid to cry. Or to realize that this community is hurting greatly to lose 21 of us all in this school. Deep in dairy country, Mantoursville is a close-knit, family-values town of kids and quiet. No one ever leaves. It's, it's, it's a small community. It's almost a town from another time. Mantoursville is a chunk out of the 50s. It's just not, it's not the real world. It really isn't. But, unfortunately, the real world came to Mentorsville. When they talk about finding bodies, and then you think that it's your child. All the flights every day. Why did it have to be this one? Michelle and Steve Giuseppe perdieron a su hija de 15 años, Larissa, in the accident. I was looking forward to her growing up and thinking about how nice it would be to just be her friend. She was really interesting and fun. Larissa era una porrista y excelente estudiante. Hubiera cumplido 16 en menos de una semana después de la tragedia. I walked into her bedroom. Just can't believe that's it. That's it. Just so sudden and so senseless. <sighs> this is, we're not going to get over this. Last night, Larissa's wake. Today, her funeral. She's still a part of my life, and uh, it's just going to be a different part now. And, and there's not, there's not going to be a final goodbye. Right now, it's just a passage, and we'll eventually be with her again. Until then, Larissa will rest amid the friends who boarded Flight 800 with her on a hillside overlooking her town. Luchar contra el dolor era particularmente difícil para los profesores de Montesville. No one ever expects any tragedy like this. Cheerleader coach Kathy Schick lost two of her they favorite squad they members. Up. They were in the prime of their lives. They had a lot to live for, a lot that they offered our school. 
Para ayudar a los estudiantes y profesores a lidiar con el dolor, el director Dan Schlandler pidió ayuda a un psicólogo. Little things you wouldn't have thought of, we wouldn't have thought of that a psychologist brought to our attention. The books, where a student signed their name in the book at the start of the year. Someone opens the book to start the year, sees the name, and could be emotionally affected by it. Uno de esos nombres era Monica Weaver. This morning, Chandler got a call from Monica Weaver's father. The call was to say that it was too soon to know whether any of the latest bodies found was Monica. We're not closed here because we still have Monica Weaver, who has yet to be identified. When that happens, there's going to be a, a great cloud lifted from the community. Pero pasaría mucho tiempo antes de que esa nube se levantara de las familias como los Giuseppis, cuya hija se encontraba a bordo del vuelo 800. If anybody learns anything from this, they better learn to appreciate their kids. I'd like to believe that, that she is seeing all of this right now. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say. I'd like to hear her voice say, yes. I miss you, Grayson. I love you. Para ayudar a familias como los Giuseppis a despedir a sus seres queridos, las autoridades organizaron un servicio cinco días después del accidente. Sixteen buses brought the families from Kennedy Airport to the edge of the Atlantic, the ocean where they lost their fathers and mothers, their sons and daughters. You have to understand that you are not alone. May God bless those who have been taken from us and welcome them to the kingdom of heaven. And most of all, may God give us the strength to persevere. Coast Guard vessels anchored offshore. Search planes paid their respects. Flight 800 had been bound for Paris, so words of comfort were also offered in French. And then everyone walked down to the water's edge. Wreaths were rowed out into the surf. Some mourners waded in on their own. Ankle deep in the waters where many of their relatives are still missing, they cast their sorrow into the sea. Mientras familiares y amigos intentaban lidiar con la tragedia, las autoridades continuaban las dolorosas investigaciones sobre la causa de la caída del vuelo 800 de la TWA. Esta historia al regreso en siglo XX. Vivos recuerdos de la bomba terrorista que destruyó el vuelo 103 de Panam sobre Lockerbie, Escocia en el 88, alimentaron las sospechas de que el vuelo 800 lo había derribado un dispositivo similar. Pruebas de eso, pensaron, podía estar en la caja negra del avión. A day long review of the plane's black box recorders suggests a catastrophic and sudden end to the flight of TWA 800, a scenario entirely consistent with a bomb. Here they are. Experts at the NTSB lab in Washington have spent the day examining the so-called black boxes. On the cockpit voice recorder, there is no talk of any mechanical problems, and no sign the pilot suspected anything was wrong with the airplane. The recording indicated a routine pre-flight takeoff and departure from JFK International. About 11 and one half minutes after takeoff, the recording ended abruptly. All four CVR channels recorded a brief fraction of a second sound just prior to the end of the tape. Ese sonido, determinaron los expertos, era la primera onda de una explosión que casi instantáneamente afectó a todos los dispositivos del avión, lo que ocasionó el abrupto corte en la grabación. Esa información era similar a la que se obtuvo de la caja negra del Pan Am 103 después de que explotó sobre Lockerbie, Escocia. It looked very much the same, but it didn't give us with any finite certainty, or any certainty at all for that matter, any information about what happened to the airplane. El FBI estaba intrigado, pero no listo para etiquetarlo como staje. I think the recovery of the, uh, of the boxes certainly do, does move the ball down, down the field. We're yet to really understand what they mean. We have experts that are looking at those. 
Surely it adds to the equation. Los investigadores comenzaron a indagar sobre qué tipo de bomba pudo haberse utilizado. If a bomb were put aboard in New York, it could have been a simple time bomb which any terrorist could fabricate. If a bomb were put aboard in Athens, the plane's previous port of call, it would have to be a much more sophisticated device rigged to go off after a certain number of takeoffs and landings. Very few terrorist groups have demonstrated that capability. A medida que pasaba el tiempo, la evidencia sugería que podía tratarse de una bomba. Autopsies performed on victims recovered from the ocean show that one passenger and two flight attendants in the first class cabin had optics embedded in their bodies. Investigators have not yet drawn any conclusions, but one possible cause is an explosion near the front of the plane, perhaps in the forward cargo hold, the same place the bomb that brought down Pan Am 103 was located. Alimentando la teoría de la bomba, se encontraron rastros de explosivos plásticos en los escombros. Investigators examining the wreckage of TWA Flight 800 have found traces of a chemical often used in explosives. It is the most solid sign yet that a bomb or missile brought the plane down. Investigators stress it is not a smoking gun, but the shattered wreckage of TWA Flight 800 has surrendered its first scientific evidence, a clue which sources say points to a bomb as the most likely cause of the crash. As a result of scientific analysis conducted by federal examiners, microscopic explosive traces of unknown origin have been found relating to TWA Flight 800. We thought uh, more than likely the reason chemicals are on the plane is that it's a bomb, but we knew there's a, a small percentage of other reasons why they could be there. And having pieces of the plane around where the chemicals were found and seeing no damage to those pieces uh, took us further and further as time went by away from the notion uh, that those chemicals were associated with any kind of a bomb. Había una razón por la cual se habían encontrado esos rastros microscópicos en el avión. The leading theory that a bomb brought down the jet was dealt a serious blow, and crash experts learned that explosive residue found in the wreckage may have been left behind by a recent test for bomb-sniffing dogs. Investigators tried to downplay the damage. It's not a, from our point of view, a dramatic major thing. The investigation continues. It neither slows it down nor speeds it up. No obstante, los investigadores buscaron más de cerca otras explicaciones para la caída. Well, another major theory investigators are following is that Flight 800 may have been brought down by a missile. At the Pentagon today, spokesman Ken Bacon addressed that possibility. There were some eyewitness accounts that make it sound as if a missile could have been involved. There is precious else to support that at this stage. Nothing in the radar leads anybody to believe that there was a missile involved. Los investigadores recolectaron cada pieza de escombro para buscar pistas. This plane was in close to a million pieces, scattered over 30, 40 square miles. An incredible task. The divers diving down, the scuba divers initially, could stay in the bottom for three or four minutes. That was it. Ice cold water. All of this metal, razor sharp, miles and miles, in fact, thousands of miles of cabling, you know, dangling airily at the bottom. Visibility three or four feet. The largest piece yet of TWA Flight 800 was brought to shore early this afternoon. A 40 by 60 foot section described as the upper front portion of the aircraft where the 747 is double decked. It's a pretty graphic piece of evidence as to what happens to an aircraft when it uh, when it crashes like this uh, wire dangling off seats attached uh, pieces of galley a coffee pot on the deck uh, almost everything that you can imagine aun así todavía no se tenía evidencia suficiente para decir que se trataba de un acto criminal Today, calm seas yielded some dramatic pieces of wreckage. Divers brought up what looked to be a door, a row of seats, and debris continues to wash up on the beach. Lead FBI investigator James Kalstrom was clear today was a good day. Uh, we're optimistic that uh, we're that much closer to to knowing what the what the situation is here. Entonces encontraron la cabina del avión. Pat Kevorkian was found in the tangle of wreckage still strapped in his seat. The body of flight engineer Richard Campbell was also recovered. Sources say the condition of those bodies virtually rules out the possibility that a bomb had been placed directly in the cockpit. 
Mientras las evidencias sobre una bomba o misil disminuían, los investigadores comenzaron a buscar en otra parte. The absence of conclusive evidence has investigators now re-examining possible structural or mechanical failures, including the remote chance of a spontaneous explosion of the jet's fuel tanks. Each Boeing 747 is equipped with seven fuel tanks, one in the belly and three in each wing. And connected to the tanks are 14 electrically powered pumps. Some investigators suggest an electrical spark coupled with a fuel leak may have caused TWA-800 to explode. I think it's fair to say that in that area of the central fuel tank that, that there is evidence that there was an explosion. And, uh, and I don't think I'm going to go further than that. Sin embargo, algunos investigadores continuaban pensando que una bomba o misil habían ocasionado la explosión. Luego, al seguir investigando, una sorprendente teoría surgió. It was brought down by a naval missile, uh, and uh, uh, we have now uh, completely confirmed the fact that it was a naval missile that uh, brought it down. Los investigadores inmediatamente negaron los cargos. It's absolute, pure, utter nonsense. It's outrageous. We are withholding no information from the American people on this accident. Mientras surgían las acusaciones, los familiares continuaban protestando sobre el lento ritmo de recuperación de cuerpos. We're concerned that the priorities of the investigation are shifting. We believe that the investigation may be taking priority at, uh, over uh, the recovery of the bodies. There is no question in anyone's mind, nor has there been, about what the priority is. Clearly, Bob Francis and I and everyone on the team wanted to recover the bodies, clearly. At the same hand, we didn't want to do it at the expense of losing critical evidence. So we really did both things simultaneously. We talked more about the body recovery because we have a thousand grieving mothers and fathers watching, listening to every word we said. 24 hours a day, divers take great personal risks including decompression sickness in trying to locate the dead. It's a delicate balance, searching for clues while maintaining sensitivity toward the living casualties of the tragedy, the families. But searchers know a sorrowful truth. After an explosion and high-speed crash into the sea, it is likely some victims will be lost forever. Finalmente, después de cuatro meses y medio, TWA hizo un esfuerzo por darle una conclusión a las familias que no habían podido recuperar los restos de sus seres queridos. Of the 230 who died in the TWA crash, 15 have not been found. And the airline today staged a funeral, reading the names... Dennis George Price. ...and preparing empty caskets for the families seeking finality. So what we thought would be the best thing for all the families and what they have said to us is they want closure as quickly as possible. But some of the families expressed resentment that it was TWA in charge of their bereavement. My brother is missing. He, he's gone and he's missing. There's no reason for a casket. It's a waste of money. Los esfuerzos continuaron para ayudar a las familias a aliviar el dolor. Casi siete meses después de la caída, investigadores llevaron a miembros de familias al hangar donde restos y piezas del avión habían sido reensambladas. Those who talked afterwards said they didn't get any answers as to why the plane crashed, but they did get some answers for themselves. I'm glad that I made the trip. I am because now I have a, a concept of just how devastating. Uh, the uh, the impact on the water actually was however um, I didn't really get the answer that I hoped to get uh, in that uh, I was hoping for a clear indication that uh, my family would have uh, died instantly we went in to see the seat that Jamie was sitting in and and looking at that I knew it was the last place that he had been and um, we were given white roses, and each one of us put a right white rose in the seat where he had been sitting, and the, uh, the number of the seat was still on the armrest. And I just pictured him sitting there in the seat with his arms on the armrest, and they have the seats all lined up row by row. And you go and, and when you look at the empty seats that are charred and, and busted up and mangled, 
you immediately run through your mind these seats were full at one time and, and they were full of life and full of people and children and husbands and wives and it's just so upsetting to see them sitting there like that. Durante esta misma mañana, investigadores todavía seguían buscando qué podía haber derribado al jet. Su sorpresiva conclusión al regreso en siglo XX. Desde el principio de la caída del vuelo 800 de la TWA, un vuelo de rutina, interrumpido por una explosión repentina, apuntaba a un acto de sabotaje. Pero después de meses de arduas investigaciones, la evidencia no podía probarlo. There is simply no evidence that a missile or a bomb or machine guns brought this airplane down. Is it possible that what you don't have would contain that one piece of evidence that would say, here it is. This is the bomb, this is the missile, this is whatever caused this terrible accident. I think it is very limited, the possibility that that evidence, that that 10% that's left could be vastly different from the 90% that we have. And the 90% includes most of the bodies. They have um, been autopsied, they've been um, um, inspected, um, and what we see is, and I think this is critical, absolutely, absolutely no evidence of, um, of a bomb um, or an explosive warhead in any of these bodies. Pero el FBI no estaba tan seguro. Jim Carlson todavía creía que había un criminal involucrado. If I was a citizen and I saw the FBI or some law enforcement agency walk away from a potential crime scene with 90% of the leads covered, 90% of the facts, or 90% of the witnesses interviewed, and say, well, probably didn't happen, they ought to all be fired. A pesar del FBI, el Comité Nacional de Seguridad de Transporte defendió fuertemente su conclusión. Everything was routine in this flight. All the discussions were the kinds of routine things that you would expect um, to uh, hear. Um, and, uh, and then all of a sudden the, um, the, the voice recorder just stops recording very abruptly. There's a very, very short uh, sound at the end of that um, uh, recording. El sonido era muy similar al ruido grabado por la caja negra del vuelo 103 de Panam, pero el comité decía que no era una bomba. Further testing identified the sound as similar to a fuel tank explosion, not a bomb. 13 minutes into the flight of TWA 800, at an altitude of 13,800 feet, the plane's center fuel tank exploded, severing the front third of the plane. After the plane went down, among the most important and most chilling pieces of evidence recovered were the passenger seats, many of which have now been analyzed and reassembled just as they were on the plane. And from the damage to the seats, what conclusion can you reach? There is no evidence um, on any of these seats that's consistent with, um, with the manifestations of a bomb, those unique features that you would expect to see from an explosion, from a bomb explosion. Aún así, el FBI, cuyo trabajo era conducir una investigación criminal, continuó buscando evidencias. We investigated all the criminal theories pretty much to the very end. I mean, halfway through, we knew it wasn't a bomb in the luggage containers. We had them. There was no evidence. We knew it wasn't a bomb in the cargo containers. We had them, no evidence. We knew there wasn't a bomb in the cockpit. I mean, we slowly ruled out things. But right to the very end, we were looking for a potential device of some sort. Finalmente, en noviembre del año 97, 16 meses después del accidente, el FBI cerró su investigación concordando con el comité según el cual no había evidencias de un acto criminal. Based on what we see, and based on the very thorough, comprehensive investigation, uh, we see no evidence of a crime. No evidence of a bomb on board? No evidence of a bomb. No evidence of a missile? No evidence of a missile. Escribieron cartas a las familias de las víctimas explicando su decisión. We thought it was important uh, that the families get some sort of notice of what was going on prior to seeing it on television. I mean, put yourself in their place. You're sitting somewhere in Pennsylvania or somewhere else, and you've lost your son or daughter. 
and you're mourning that and will be the rest of your life. And you turn on the television one night and you see some facts across the screen. You maybe see me in a press conference giving out some information that's new. I don't think you'd feel too good about that. Richard Penzer, whose sister Judy died in the crash, is one of the family members set to receive a personal letter from lead FBI agent James Kallstrom. Kallstrom writes, our investigation has found absolutely no evidence to cause us to believe that the TWA Flight 800 tragedy was the result of a criminal act. Sure, a lot better to think that it's an accident than intentional sabotage or an, an intentional criminal act. Como evidencia de su conclusión, el FBI mostró un video de animación computarizada de la CIA. The CIA animation illustrates the final terrifying moments of Flight 800, a Boeing 747 that ultimately was pulverized into nearly a million pieces. Just after the aircraft exploded, it pitched up abruptly and climbed several thousand feet from its last recorded altitude of about 13,800 feet to a maximum altitude of about 17,000 feet. The front third of the aircraft, including the cockpit, separated from the fuselage within four seconds after the aircraft exploded. This significant sudden loss of mass from the front of the aircraft caused the rapid pitch up and climb. We feel very, very comfortable that what that videotape portrays is very close is it exactly? Probably not exactly, but very close to what happened. About 42 seconds after it exploded, its left wing separated from the fuselage, releasing unburned fuel. The fuel's subsequent ignition and blaze produced a dramatic cascade of flames, visible to eyewitnesses more than 40 miles away. Y la cinta se refería a lo que 244 testigos oculares habían visto, un destello de luz en el cielo que parecía un misil. The tape was made to explain, first to us, and then to the public and the families, and the naysayers and the peer challengers and anyone else out there, the aeronautical engineers, what these 244 people saw. What is the explanation? If they didn't see a missile, what could they have seen? the eyewitnesses almost certainly saw only the burning aircraft without realizing it. To date, there is no evidence that anyone saw a missile shoot down TWA Flight 800. All 244 witnesses saw events that happened after, after the center fuel tank blew up. So they did not see a missile attacking the plane. Just one day after ending his criminal investigation, lead FBI agent James Kallstrom gave us our first close-up look at the rebuilt wreckage of TWA Flight 800. I mean, just look at this. A 92-foot section of the shattered jetliner, an eerie patchwork of twisted and charred metal, an unintended monument to tragedy, pockmarked by hundreds of holes that to untrained eyes suggest a bomb or a missile. And how do you know there wasn't a small bomb? Right. How do you know there wasn't right. missiles? Right. Well, we know because we do edge analysis, hole analysis, and the important thing for us was to build this. Además de descartar un acto de sabotaje, las autoridades también llegaron a rescatar todas las víctimas del océano. All 230 victims of this tragedy were eventually recovered and identified, which I think is a tremendous tribute to the, the team of people that was responsible for that operation. The task of not only recovering and identifying every single person on the plane, but also recovering 98% of the fuselage and putting it back together in order to figure out what happened. It's just a Herculean task. Pero saber tanto sobre lo sucedido también trajo un dolor especial. You view the animation that was put together um, and you visualize that animation and what's going on in the back of that plane while they're while the nose fell off and the plane rises another three or four thousand feet because of the weight differential and then it reaches its apex and the engine stall and basically the plane is just hanging there for five or ten seconds. The terror, if anyone was alive on that plane at that moment, the terror that they must have been experiencing, 
and the visions that we have as family members of what our family was going through, that's, that's the one thing that just uh, haunts me. And I can't get that out of my mind. Comentarios finales al regreso en siglo XX. La explosión del vuelo 800 de la TWA parecía en el momento un acto terrorista tan obvio que las autoridades intensificaron la seguridad en los aeropuertos de la nación. Meses después, cuando se determinó que una catastrófica explosión en el tanque central del avión y no un ataque terrorista causó la caída, ese incremento en la seguridad se mantuvo porque el hecho es que, aunque una falla mecánica haya derribado al vuelo 800 de la TWA, la amenaza de un ataque terrorista contra un jet de vuelo comercial continúa vigente. Soy Mike Wallace y esto es Siglo XX.